We're going to talk about the 10 propositions. Arizonans are going to have a long ballot uh, this year, Be you know, in addition to the um, congressional candidates and the statewide candidates and the, you know, school board and all these other people who are on it. We have these 10 propositions and of the 10, eight were put on the ballot by the legislature. And Blog for Arizona for many years has said, you know, when there's a proposition on the ballot from the legislature, you should vote no. Well, six of them, that's true this year, but not all eight from the legislature. And so basically I'm going to start with the six that are no votes because these are relatively easy in my opinion. And um, as uh, Larry mentioned, there was that ground game event and all of the ground game videos are on my YouTube channel. And so you can see the whole hour and a half program. And what you're getting today is like a, the Cliff Notes version. And on the YouTube channel, you can hear the experts talk about all these propositions too, not just me. So anyway, the first ones we're going to start with are the three that are proposed by the legislature that weaken the citizens initiative. Because you know, that's the one thing they really hate is when people try to put something on the ballot, you know, like raising the minimum wage. What a crazy idea is that, right? And so Prop 128 is the first one. And this one would weaken the Voter Protection Act. And so I've been in Arizona for 40 years. The Citizens Initiative was put into the Constitution by the progressives who wrote the Arizona Constitution. And so I've seen lots of Citizens Initiatives over the years. And there was a period where the legislature basically tried to stop all the Citizens Initiatives. It would be passed by the people and then the legislature would come into um, you know, session in January and say, oh, they didn't really want to do that. You know, we'll just get rid of that. So we passed the Voter Protection Act. So Prop 128 would weaken the Voter Protection Act and also make it easier for the legislature to get rid of citizens' initiatives after they've already been passed. And so no on 128. Uh, Prop 129 would all require the uh, citizens' initiative to be limited to a single subject and to have the subject of the initiative, everything about the, the um, initiative would be in the title. And so the legislature has a single subject rule. Our bills are supposed to be one subject and the subject is supposed to be reflected in that little title that you see that's like three to five words long. And so this doesn't work for citizens initiatives though because, you know, for example, the courts or the, or the Republicans could say, oh, you know, for example, stop dark money, that has to be broken up into five different citizens' initiatives, not just one. And so you could see how Prop 129 would raise the amount of money you needed to pass an, an initiative significantly. So also very bad. Uh, and also, if everything has to be in the title, you're going to have to get really long titles. You know? So anyway, the editor in me comes out sometimes. <laughs> Uh, Prop 132 requires citizens' initiatives to have a supermajority. So that would be a two-thirds majority in order to pass. Now, what that goes to the voters requires a two-thirds majority. And so a lot of um, citizens' initiatives have been really popular, like raising the minimum wage or the multiple times we voted to legalize marijuana. A lot of times those have passed by a big margin but they almost never get to two thirds. So this would knock out a lot of citizens initiatives. And ironically, uh, this passed through the legislature with a one vote majority because it was passed on a party line vote by the Republicans. So 132, all three of those are bad. Uh, 309 is the next one. This is also a bad, bad bill that came through the legislature. It started out as a striker in the Government and Elections Committee by Representative Fillmore. And so you can see right off the bat, you know, it's got a shaky beginning as a striker. And so what this is, is it increases the strictness of our voter identification laws in the state of Arizona. We already have some of the strictest voter identification laws, and this would make it worse. And so you know how the your ballot has like that... Uh, it has the ballot and then you have the interior envelope and then the exterior envelope that you mail the, the pebble uh, back in with. On the interior envelope, currently you have to sign it and date it. Well, this would require you to put your birthday on it plus your official voter ID number. And this could be your driver's license number, your official state ID, the last four digits of your social security, or the original uh, voter ID card number that you got from the recorder. So first of all, 
this is a lot of process, right? I don't know any database that has all those numbers in it. So that means that every envelope, in addition to matching your signature, they would be matching all, one of all these other things with it. And so that's a lot more work. That's no more money for the recorder's office. It would slow the process down. And if you forget or screw up any of those numbers, like if, you, if, you know, if you're dyslexic like me, it's really hard to make sure you get all your numbers in the right order. So you get your numbers mixed up, your ballot is gone. So that is a voter suppression. So don't believe all those cute little red, white, and blue signs that say vote yes on 309, vote no on 309. So the next one is Prop 131. This creates a, a office of Lieutenant Governor. Now, there are some people who support this, but I don't like this because this just gives the governor an easy out, right? I've been here for 40 years. I've seen three times the Secretary of State has taken over for the governor, uh, and twice the party changed. And so this lieutenant governor is really a way to cement the party in power, right? Because, for example, after Katie Hobbs and Carrie Lake became the nominees in the primary, they would have nominated or, or appointed a lieutenant governor to run with them as a team. And so that way, you know, if the governor decides to leave and take a job in D.C. or gets impeached like F. Meekum, then the lieutenant governor takes over. And then that person runs as an incumbent, although they have never been elected really on their own. And so I think this is a bad idea. I think it opens the door for governors to leave, leave us midterm. Uh, it also, um, I, I, it's more government. This was created just so the Republicans uh, could cement their path. And so I don't think that the lieutenant governor is a good idea. Uh, lastly, and the bad ideas from the legislature is Prop 130. Now, this one is a constitutional amendment which changes multiple property tax rates. And so it is being billed as a fix for uh, disabled veterans. But uh, if you ever watch my videos on my YouTube channel, this actually was a subject of one of my vid videos. I have a video that talks about unnecessary or duplicative bills that waste time and money. So Prop 130 is based on SCR 1011 from Senator Mesnard, and it is the subject of one of those videos because it was one of eight bills to fix the property tax for veterans. And so we had four sets of two bills each, and the ones that finally got passed were the ones from Senator Mesnard. And so other bills were a little cleaner. And what I don't like about this is that it goes beyond veterans. And in fact, uh, it has lots of property tax um, statutes that are eliminated, basically. And then it says the legislature can just set the rates for these. It also includes a specific tax break for equipment owned by businesses. And so there's a lot in Prop 130, and it's not just about veterans. And I'd like to point out that this disabled veterans uh, part of it, it's about disabled veterans who own property. So this would not help the homeless veterans who are out on the street with no legs and sitting there in a wheelchair and a sign on their laps. This is about people who own property and getting a property tax break. And one thing you'll notice is that when the legislature cuts property taxes, that hurts local services. And that leads into one of the other propositions, which you'll hear about in a few more minutes. So now we're going on to the four uh, of the 10 that I'm recommending a yes vote for. And so the next one is Prop 209. And Prop 209 is the Predatory Debt, Coll Debt Protection Act. And so this is the second citizens initiative that's been proposed by the group Healthcare Rising. You might remember a few years ago, they had one that tackled surprise billing and also had um, wages and uh, healthcare uh, for patients in it. It had a lot of things and it did not make it onto the ballot back then. And so this particular one is much more focused. And so this looks at protecting people from medical bankruptcy, which is a very good thing. And so we found with the Affordable Care Act that many more people were, um, were um, brought onto health insurance, but there's still way too much medical bankruptcy. And so what uh, Prop 209 does is it helps you protect the money that you have in your homestead and some of your other assets so you don't lose everything when the debt collectors come after you for medical debt that you couldn't afford. 
the next one is uh, Prop 211, so that's the Stop Dirty Money. And again, this is another one that's been trying to get on the ballot forever. It's finally on the ballot. I've been a, a proponent of Stop Dirty Money. In fact, I've been, Jim and I have been out there putting signs up on the streets for this one. And so what this does is it brings more um, campaign finance transparency into Arizona elections. And so as a swing state, there's millions of dollars in outside money coming to the state of Arizona to try to um, to sway our votes. And so the independent expenditures are just very high. I noticed that particularly in the in the primary, you know, and that's how we got some of the primary winners that we did. And so what this says is that um, the voters have the right to know if millions of dollars are being spent in the state of Arizona, we have a right to know who those big pocketed donors are. When you or I give a donation to a candidate, we have to disclose our names, our addresses, and our occupation, and the amount that we gave. And I think that people who are giving thousands of dollars to sway an election for or against candidates or initiatives should also have to disclose who they are and how much they gave. And so I think uh, Prop 201 is, 211 is very good. The next one is Prop 310, and this one is a um, statewide uh, transaction privilege tax increase for fire districts. And so this is the one I was referring to. So there has been tinkering by the legislature with property taxes over the last 10 years, and this has left many rural fire districts dangerously underfunded. And so what Prop 301 310 is, their goal is to increase response times uh, in rural Arizona. So this is for people who live there, but also people like us in the city who travel through Arizona on the highways, or we are vacationing there and camping or whatever. And so this would help us all. And so again, this is, they're coming to us for a sales tax essentially because the, the legislature tinkered with the property tax. So this is a case in point regarding Prop 130, if they tinker with all those property taxes, then that is going to starve local services. And so we really have to watch out for what they're doing up there in Phoenix, obviously. The last one that I'm going to talk about is Prop 308. And so this is in-state tuition for dreamers. And so these are people who were brought to the United States by their parents, sometimes when they were very small children. And uh, there was an initiative passed several years ago that said that, um, you know, it was basically against dreamers and said that they couldn't get um, in-state tuition. Non-citizens couldn't have in-state tuition. So these people are residents of the state of Arizona. They were brought here as children. They have lived here. They have never lived in the other country, whatever that was. And so this gives them in-state tuition. And I think this is a good idea. We need more workers in the state of Arizona. We need more educated workers. And a better, better educated workforce helps us all. And so uh, I've had some comments on my YouTube channel about how this is not a good idea to give these people, you know, in-state tuition. But I think a better workforce is good for everybody. So again, I urge you to check out the YouTube channel. Uh, it has the entire TAG event but it has every speaker's uh, piece. And so if you want to learn more about 308 or 310 or 211 or 209, <laughs> I'm forgetting all the numbers, they're very good uh, speeches by every, um, every group talking about why these initiatives are a good idea. And uh, like I said, I'll give you more details. And what I've just given you is kind of like the highlights. And so... Um, that's all I have to say. This is a, an important election, obviously, to elect the right candidates, but to also be mindful of these propositions because some of them are going to take away your rights uh, regarding voting and also take away your rights regarding citizens' initiatives. So please educate your friends and family members politely. Don't make them angry, but we really need everybody to vote and everybody to be pay attention and know what's on the ballot and be educated about the propositions and the candidates. So that's all I have to say.